But for today, we're going to be focusing up on the skid plates and uh, trying to not break any more bolts. Hey friends, Robert here with Coastal GX. I'm here in McAllen at D&D &D Alignment, apparently going to the beach all the time. Uh, where even when you think that you've cleaned up the bottom, the underbelly of it, it's still going to leave some salt, you know, in there and it's going to lead to some oxidation. My old uh, uh, skid plates, completely rotten, completely oxidized. And so now what I did is I went to RCI and I ordered some skid plates. I didn't order the full, uh, the full uh, set, but I ordered uh, two or three of them to kind of get them installed over here. But I'm running into some issues. I have some broken bolts under Sandy and we're going to try to figure it out. I'm going to be here with my friend DJ Villarreal with D&D &D Alignment and we're going to see if we can get it taken care of. Hopefully we'll learn something. I met my buddy DJ Villarreal out at the island one day. He was doing his overlanding stuff. You know, he was out there with his Jeep. And uh, I decided, I was like, hey, you know, we started talking and he told me about his shop. And man, he is into what we like. He likes overlanding, he's like, likes off-roading, he's got a Jeep himself, he's got a, some other four by fours and he's got this beautiful shop. I did not know that. It's here in McAllen, it's hidden over here, but he works on, you know, all sorts of uh, off-road vehicles. He's got an FJ behind me. And of course I got Sandy already up here and uh we're gonna be taking a look at it hey here's dj right here dj how doing hey man uh so tell us a little bit of what, what's the plan with sandy today well, we're gonna replace the skid plates we're gonna do our best to try to take every bolt out of there without breaking them and uh hopefully we'll get you on the road soon boom like i said guys you know he's one of us he loves off-roading vehicles so i know he's gonna do a great job or at least give it his best over here and uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. So, you don't, what's missing here? You're, the, the entire original OEM skid plate is missing. Why? Because it's rotten, okay? All that salt got to it and it's just junk. So, you know, in the process, while I was, I thought I was just gonna be able to replace them with my new skid plates over here. Okay, these are aluminum powder coated and aluminum, that's for the transmission and that one right there is for uh obviously the engine skid plate and you can see man how thick this is it's thick it's, it is a powder coated aluminum and i even got a catalytic converter skid plate slash protector to take care of that because you don't want those thieves messing with your ride there he is he's removing this the transmission skid plate that's the original Did you manage to get it out with no broken? No broken bolts. No broken bolts. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And, and guys, Sandy has some other little ailments. Uh, and apparently, I didn't know that this is a thing with GXs. But please comment down below if your GX is experiencing this. Now, guys, if you see that it's all kind of greasy up here, you know, it looks a little shiny. That's because I did a lot of work on this. I put some pour 15, you know, make sure I treated it, put pour 15, and then I put some surface shield blaster, kind of like fluid film, you know, to give it, a, that's why you see that oily, that oily residue right there. It's because I don't want, I don't want any more of, uh, you know, of this oxidation. I don't want any more surface rust to come along but I was able to treat everything, you know, all the little parts. I even got into the frame, but you see how the surface rust, this is where that transmission or that engine plate or in the transmission cover was. And you can see how there's some surface rust here, little surface rust right there. And that's what you can expect, you know, when you go to the beach all the time and you don't do a thorough, you know, underwash or cleaning of your vehicle. Um, it is very important to take a look at this. I've been going out there for a few years now and yeah, I, I, I thought I was getting under there, but it's still not enough. DJ, does it look really bad? You know, rust? Uh, it's, there's quite a bit, but I mean, 
We were expecting it, yeah. being the life that you give it. Yeah. But you can tell that it has been taken care of, because yeah. it should be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. But now we're good. Yeah, so, I mean, you've seen some of those videos, guys, especially at the beginning when Sandy was pristine. I didn't know about, you know, the protection of fluid film and all these other products. And I got caught on the high tide, and I think that a lot of this is from that original drive out at the island <laughs> when I got caught with a high tide. And this is the damage. So please, if you have a new vehicle and you plan to take it off-roading, especially out at the island, make sure guys make sure that you treat it first okay fluid film or surface shield will work for you in order to install to install these uh, skid plates you know there are going to be some bolts here that need to be removed this one over here obviously as you can see is broken and uh it will move a little closer over here we're going to see that there's another one that's broken in here. Look at this, man. Now that they removed, now that they were able to remove this, this I hadn't been able to treat. And look at this. Look at all this sand that's still stuck in here. Just when you think that you had done enough, you know, nope. Look at this. Oh, man, this is terrible. I'm going to have to get to work on this one day. Because if you leave this untreated, this is not good. Now, I did blast some of that surface shield inside of these, uh, inside of the frame, okay? So hopefully that'll work, you know, help something, but there's sand in here. I don't wanna leave a mess for him, but uh, I need to get this out. Oh, and by the way, check it out. So this is what I'm talking about. You see this, this pink stuff right here? This is all that uh, coolant leaking it's a very slow leak you can't even tell so it can creep up on you so I need to be checking those coolant levels every once in a while Robert I have a broken bolt here so what I'm gonna try to do is weld a uh, nut to that little stud that's there to try to pull it off the only thing I'm trying to figure out it might be easier if I take this cross member off so that I can uh, extract that bolt Look at the shoulders on these, how, how thin they were. That's why they were breaking. Look how thick it's supposed to be up here. Yeah. And look how thin it is there. Just rusted out. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I did order some replacement bolts for them. Okay, good. But, but RCI. Sends you the bolt kit. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Your original bolts are not going to be needed, okay? So in my case, that's a good thing because, you know, the ones that I had originally, as you saw, are completely corroded. They, that's why they were breaking off. And uh, the new ones that are coming from RCI, yeah, they're, they're beefy and they're made specially for that. Well, we decided to, to remove this cross member from the frame, which is bolted on here on the ends and then the transmission mount. We're gonna take it down and work this on the bench upside down so that we can weld better and I think it'll be easier to pull that bolt out that way so uh, we're gonna try that the best penetrant rubber right there. that one right there These are the long bolts that are coming out of that. Yes. Right there. Look at the shape of that one, man. We're probably going to replace that before we put it back together. Okay. This one broke. That, that classic. I'm doing all right. Good 
make it a lot easier to be able to penetrate some weld in there to try to take that out. If not, we'll have to uh, figure out another way. Throw the whole track, uh, tr uh, truck in the uh, trash. <laughs> hey, you know, it's a replaceable part, yeah. but I'm sure you'd spend a couple hundred bucks on that cross member. So might might want to consider that, yeah. yeah we're going to try to save it. Put this washer here, weld it, and then weld a nut to the washer. Hopefully it'll come out. Okay. We'll try to okay. make it work. A lot different working on the bench. Oh yeah. Than up upside down yes, over there, right? Yes. Celebrate Robert. It's looking good. Now we can celebrate Robert. Yes! <laughs> Just making sure that all the, the holes are going to be clean and ready to to uh, install new, new screws in when we get. It's a lot easier here than it will be hanging upside down. Gotcha. The threads are good, but the neck of the bolt is corroded really bad, and that's why they're breaking. Okay, okay. So, oh yeah, look at how thin it is. Yeah, so I'm gonna recommend that we put all new bolts. Yeah. Wh whatever we take off, put a new one. So obviously DJ removed one over here, and DJ, you still have uh, this this other stubborn one, huh? This one right here. Now on this one, Robert. Yeah. Being that it's just holding this bracket. Yeah. I I ended up knocking out the nut that was in there welded. Okay. And I put a stud. Okay. So what the stud does, it it bites into the metal. Okay. So now, now if you ever need to take it off, you just take this nut off, take this bolt off, and the whole bracket comes off. Gotcha. Well, we've, we've uh, extracted four broken bolts. This one here is not going to give us an option but to knock it through. And then I'm going to have to cut this cross member open, flip it up, put a new nut, weld it on the back side, bring it back down and re-weld so that we can stay with a, with a factory uh, position. And, and our, our uh, skid plate bolts will then uh, work properly. They're longer, so I couldn't I couldn't make it come out this way. Yeah. It's gonna have to go this way. So all our ideas are out, but now we're gonna go to this. Oh my God! So it's almost like uh, he's pretty much a surgeon over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is surgery right here, guys. Look at our, our, our the tools that we have access to. You try to do this at home, on the ground, with no lift, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. So this, this is one of those jobs that you might wanna have a shop do it for you because it, it, you can always, it, it, what, what's supposed to be easy can turn into a, a nightmare. Yeah, days work, you know, so. So, me, there, I, I should not, my man card should not be revoked for bringing it to you, because no. I, I made an effort. Yes, sir, you did. But it, it just, I, I had to throw in the towel at one point. Yeah, well, I mean, unless you have a lift at home, you're working on your back yeah. and uh, limited to tools. Here between all of us, we'll have a tool or we'll have a bolt, an extra bolt to do something with, you know. Danger? Danger. Oh, yeah. See, that nut is just tacked well here. It already came off. So it was, it was like very weak, that nut. Not really. I mean, all it's doing is holding that little bolt there uh -huh. and holding that shield. The, yeah. It's not a, it's not a... So, that's what it is. Oh my just a, God. Just a little square nut tacked on the ends. Crazy. So that's what's behind. And of course, that's why it was stubborn. Yes. 
Wow, so crazy. What, what we're gonna end up doing is doing that little cut. Yeah. Open it up, tack weld another nut, then we'll be we'll be good to go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a nut that fits this bolt. Yes. And then I'll tack weld it here. Yeah. Bring this back down, re-weld this, grind it, and nothing ever happened. <laughs> now I'll just tack weld. Better at factory, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's all go covered and yeah, but still, I mean, good job. We got that done. Yeah. Okay, so this cross member. Now I don't, I don't have a replacement for for those. Yeah. Let me uh, let me run down to the bolt place and just get them. Ten four. Okay. We're here. Might as well. Ten four. <laughs> So you went to the corner store. I did. And what'd you find? Found me these uh, nice new bolts to replace these here. That are all pitted out, thinned out. So we're gonna go with new hardware. And, and we're, and we're gonna we're gonna put anti seize in them. Anti seize. Yeah. Bolt, we'll just replace it with the new ones. Yeah. You have them, so might as well. All right. Those are the originals. The same thing. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm glad I bought them then. Yeah. I thought I wasn't going to need them. No, yeah. And the thing is that, I mean, while we're at it, uh -huh. might as well replace them. You heard that, guys. So if you're going to be doing this and if you're in an extreme situation like mine, you know, I mean, not all of the not all the rigs out there are going to be, you know, uh, all oxidized and have the, the dramatic effect that mine had over here. Mm -hmm. But if you do, it'd be a good idea just to uh, use new hardware. Yeah, get new hardware. And I will leave a link in the description to uh, the bolts that I used. Or you can just go ahead and message me or send me an email or whatever. And I'll be more than happy to, to let you know. He already installed the cross member and um before this is how messed up things are before we can install the engine skid plate we need to remove yet one more stuck stud broken stud that's in here and he may have to do the same technique that he used with the cross member where he cuts it and puts it back together but we're gonna have to see that you're also gonna have to as you can see i have the iron man front bumper here and um so we're gonna have to unbolt this, these right here. As you can see, this is just the front. And then uh, just to kind of drop it a little bit so we can have some space to work on that broken stud. Okay. I might not even have to cut it. I might be able to just tack it right there. Knock that off, put it in. Well, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of just welding the nut over there, I put it on this little plate. So now the little plate will have a, a better area to weld. Nice. You have more area. Yeah. yeah.
for the front engine skid plate, there seems to be six of them. Yes. Um, two of them are going to be the longer ones, and they appear to be the ones that go in the back with those with those spacers. Okay. Got it. I think there's a torque, um, well, we'll torque them at the end, I guess. Yeah, right now I'm just, I, I just need, it still needs to go up a little bit. Yeah. For some reason, this, these bolts go in a little bit tighter than the original ones. They go in a little tighter than which ones? Than the original ones. Oh. Let them go in. You just wanted to grab a few threads and... Yeah, once we get them all yeah. started, we'll, we'll come back in here and tighten everything up. What goes where, right? Yeah. Is it like that, or is it the other way around? Because that's this is the uh, that's it's the, be the driver's side. Yeah. Passenger side. So guys, I had to run to the corner store where the bolts are because RCI did have one bolt missing over here in the back. So I had to go and, and, and get it. And while I was over there, that's when uh, DJ was able to install the other part, which is right, you see right here, that arm. So that arm that you're talking about here, that brace, you know, goes first. Then you have those little inserts, okay? You're gonna have like some metal spacers there. And then you go ahead and you uh, uh, torque them in. You have to use the hardware that came with RCI because, you know, it's gotta be a little longer. You can't use the original bolts that were there. So I hope that makes some sense. And these are supposed to be torqued to 25, I believe. 22. 22, 22, double check. Robert. What's up? They're on there. <laughs> it was it was super easy, huh? <laughs> if it wasn't if it wasn't for those multiple how many studs, man? How many broken studs today? Uh, five or six. Five or six? Yeah, some of them were easy to come out. Yeah. And uh, the ones that we couldn't get them out, we cut them out. <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty intense, man. That was at another level. Thank you so yeah, much. Oh sir. my goodness. What do you think of the quality of uh, the skid? It looks kids? real nice. It's a nice kit. Yeah. Um, the alignment guy ain't going to like you. No? No, because now he's got to. You'll either have to remove them all or find a real thin wrench to get in here and be able to move that can. Really? Yeah. Well, and you would know this because. I 
I do them. <laughs> you do alignment here, yeah. okay? It's all good. Hey guys, we're here with DJ Villarreal and Fernando, manager at D&D Wheel Alignment here in McAllen. DJ is one of us, man. He likes to go overlanding. And uh, DJ, how did you find Coastal GX? Well, I was uh, surfing the YouTube and looking for places to get ideas. And I ran across your, your channel and have been a faithful viewer since. And I ran into you at the beach one time Stop to say hi and now you're here. Yeah. Hey, so you do relate to people who like off-roading and who like to go camping. So you understand because you do it yourself. You have a we, Jeep and we do. Yeah. So tell me, you know, what is it that you would like to tell the folks that are here in the valley or maybe in the neighboring areas that are looking for some place to come in and, and get their work done? Well, we service all types of rigs, cars. Um, you know, uh, we even sell some of the overlanding yeah. equipment. And, uh, you know, when somebody likes to do it, they can advise you yeah. the right equipment. Yeah. And uh, we get out on the beach and we'll spend the night, two or three nights, and uh, we just have a blast. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're excited that you're here with us, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that you chose us to put your skid plates on er, uh, earlier I, today. I trust y'all. And um, <laughs> this is Fernando. Uh -huh. Fernando is yeah, our man. service manager. Yes, and he's our parts manager and he's our tech and he's our <laughs> marketing guy of, yeah for everything <laughs> so fernando would know i mean fernando what is it that you do exactly here or what what type of services do you bring to the public well basically we we work we specialize in suspension and brakes that's our main main uh, uh line of work mm -hmm. and uh we also do maintenance we do accessories for trucks uh, lift kits, bumpers, lights, all the main accessories to, to have your truck on the road look nice. We also do some other stuff on the engine, like if you need to change an alternator or a water pump. If it's, if it's something that we can do and we have the tools to do it, we'll do it. And if not? If not, we have several local shops that we trust and we can sub the, the work to them. You bring the car to us and we do suspension, we do brakes and you need your AC to get fixed, we take it to, to a specialist that we know that he's gonna do a good good job and he's not gonna overcharge you or anything. There you go, guys. Since 1969, that's the year I was born. There you go. That's how long they've been in business here and I'm so happy that I found this gem of a place. They did a wonderful job today. I, I Man, I, I, I couldn't have done it alone. I really recommend that if you guys are gonna be going that route, and if you find yourself in a pickle, please go seek professional help. Maybe come and call these guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.